summer bass on the weed lines, bass in the slop, the deep edge and the shallow edge of the primary largemouth bass zone. But what lies in between? Plenty. Huge areas of lush weeds or submerged wood support big bass all summer, even though there's very little obvious depth change. Yet the flats host loads of big bass action for those who know how to interpret its subtle nuances, as Al Linder reveals August 15th. Hey, how would you like to know about an area in your favorite lake that is kind of a secret spot, an area that you can catch more largemouth bass in? Got your interest, don't I? You know, in most bass fishing circles, the majority of the effort, the pressure goes in shallow water areas first where you can object fish, boat docks, lily pads, reeds, stump flats, shallow water object fish. Then the guys crank up their motors, leave these shallow water flats, come way out here on a drop-offs like I'm on now, and fish these eight to 15 foot ledges, throwing crankbaits, worms, or whatever, and in many cases, they bypass the best bass areas in the entire lake. The area between the shallows and the drop-off, the area of the flats. Now, there's some flats that hold more fish than others. That's what I'd like to cover today. What to look for, when to fish them, and how to fish them. Speaking of the hows, I'm going to be fishing this inline buzz bait. This happens to be called the Floyd's buzzer. I can fish it fast and efficiently and effectively. That's part of the story, and I'll tell you the rest after I catch a few fish. For weeds that she'd come out of. Not a big bass, but a good way to start. In fact, that ain't that bad. Two pound fish. I love working those flats on days like this. You get a little overcast and they just eat those fast moving baits up. One of the keys to fishing these flats is these overcast or low light conditions. Overcast days like today or early and late in the day, those fish come out of that cover and they just roam the flats more. They're more aggressive. They're better, better biting fish. Oh, another fish. Oh, man, did you see that puppy hit that thing? Those bass are really going today. They're really hitting that thing. When they're that aggressive, you know that that bite is going to be good. This is one of those days that you, whoa, where you can go out and catch 15, 20 bass in three, four hours running over these flats. Nice fish again. You know, good bread and butter fish. In early summer, the flats are the first area to bloom after the shallows begin to thicken. Mid-depth weed growth pops up here, there, and everywhere. Clumps thicken and rise toward the surface. At this time, bass tend to use the inside edges of developing weed lines. The fish move from area to area relating to the best available cover. As some areas become too thick, others become just right. Once summer arrives, conditions stabilize and so do fish positions. Subtle changes in depth or changes in bottom composition create visible changes in underwater weed growth. Different variety of weeds grow at different depths or in different bottom conditions. For an example, some weed types might only grow out to four feet of water. Coontail might be abundant for say six to 10 feet, while cabbage or pondweed grows in 10 to 15. Here and there, assorted odd mixtures of miscellaneous weeds might be too thick for bass use, concentrating bass in prime habitat areas. Changes or edges of any kind concentrate bass. The most obvious are deep holes or areas of hard bottom where weeds don't grow. Less obvious are the edges where cabbage meets coontail or the inside edge of the coontail where weeds cease to grow. Yet they're obvious to the bass, believe me. 
Active bass tend to be right on the edges, while inactive bass tend to be down under or inside the edge. And let's not forget that the top of the water is an edge too. Bass cruising over the top of the weeds are usually more aggressive than those that are buried inside them. In general, fast-moving horizontal presentations like crankbaits or spinnerbaits are best for high-riding active bass. Hey, try to touch the tops of cover, it triggers fish. However, if the cover rises directly to the surface, hey, you're limited to baits like buzzbaits or surface lures, stuff that you can fish through cover easily. Adapt to the conditions the bass do. Inactive bass call for slower, more subtle approaches. Go down after them with worms or jigs. Concentrate on high percentage areas like the edges of weed clumps or heavy wood. If you don't get results, then be prepared to fish right down into the middle of the thickest, heaviest cover with a jig and pig or other slow-moving snag-resistant type of lures like a plastic worm. Summer finds bass in a variety of areas. You're best off selecting the area you think has the most active fish for the time of day or the prevailing weather conditions. Then concentrate your efforts there until conditions change. For example, you might fish weed line bass in midday. Switch to bass on the flats in early evening as the sun begins to drop. The last 45 minutes before sunset, you might see a hot bite in a shallow water slopper reeds, even though they were dead during the afternoon. So you can see versatility is a big key to consistent summer success. You look down here and there's real deep tufts of weeds. This is a clear water lake, so the weeds on this flat are real deep. They're scattered cabbage, coontail, milfoil type weed. And those bass are just laid in those mats. If you don't have heavy cover all the way across the flats, and this could be stump flats in a reservoir, as long as there's cover, there'll be bass on the flats. That's the most important thing to remember. A lot of cover. Oh! <laughs> That's the best fish that I got. That's one of the mo gators. Get out of the weeds, man. I can't get her head up out of there. Oh, nice bass. Oh, good fish. Four, at least a four. <laughs> ah, that's a nice bass for those flats. Sometimes these big, big sows like this live on those flats and never, ever, ever get bothered. Fishing flats can surprise you, really surprise you. Bass like this are not uncommon on flats. In many cases, more productive than the shallow water or the deep water drop-off areas.